When the state ended its system of county government in 1999, the Hampshire Council of Governments was formed as a consortium of member towns within Hampshire County. Earlier this week, the council announced its intentions to cease operations, citing a, quote, unsustainable financial burden as its primary reason for doing so. The council's troubles are not recent, with ongoing issues prompting the withdrawal of two member towns, South Hadley and Belchertown, over the past two years. It still has ongoing financial liabilities, which the council hopes to reconcile by selling the old Hampshire County Courthouse in Northampton. Ray Herschel sat down with HCG's Executive Director Todd Ford and its Chairman Russ Piotr to discuss the Council's plans to dissolve. And full disclosure, Mr. Piotr is the former General Manager of this television station. Well, I think most people are aware we made a public announcement of yeah. our financial situation and our plan uh, to dissolve with legislative help. We did that on Wednesday. Uh, and what we're doing is continuing to work with the delegation and to work with interested parties for the Hampshire Courthouse. For instance, today we had a tour from the trial court, Chief Administrative Justice Paula Carey uh, and John Williams, her, uh, the, the trial court's uh, head administrator. Uh, they took a look at the building, and Senator Joe Comerford at that meeting talked a lot about the timeline. Uh, the Council of Governments, uh, we feel, has... Uh, enough cash to make it meet its obligations in until sometime after the end of June, beginning of July, and then, uh, and then we'll see what happens next. For those people who are watching the program wondering what happened uh, with the Council of Governments back in 1999 when uh, the uh, county system of government uh, went defunct, um, you had a lot of optimism for the transition into this uh, this form, uh, the Council of Governments. But what happened along the way, and and why are you in the situation you were, you're into today? Well, let me let me let me let Todd talk about the stuff in the middle. Yeah. If you don't mind, I'll sure. talk about the beginning and end because I didn't live here then, and so learning about it was kind of fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. uh, when county government was abolished, uh, elections and new things were ratified in the election of 99, 98, November of 98. Uh, the councils, uh, different options were created in different places. Uh, Hampshire is unique. Uh, and what happened was, I think, with all the best of intentions and hopes for the future, as you just said, uh, folks uh, created a council of governments that uh, every town was going to be a member of. They were going to pay an assessment of one-tenth of a mill on every dollar of uh, property valuation. And that was a significant amount of money. It was, it was going to be almost a million dollars a year and got up to $1.3 million a year, uh, which you could run an organization on. Unfortunately, uh, there was also a little clause in the legislation and the charter that said that after three years, uh, a city or town could withdraw. And the big four did uh, for reasons that they had and were probably good reasons for them. Uh, but when Northampton, Amherst, East Hampton, and Ware all pulled out, that really cut the revenues. And from then, it got to be tough slight. Just a matter of time. Todd, anything you want to add in terms of, uh, t talk about the, the entity itself, the programs that were offered uh, through the Council of Governments and, and the programs that are still being offered today as we speak. Sure. Um, also, this isn't necessarily a surprise. There's letters dating back from literally days after the founding of the organization, letting the state know that it is most likely financially unsustainable without that ongoing revenue stream of the membership dues. Uh, so this has really been going on since the, the founding of the organization. And in between, the organization created basically for-profit money generating services in order to fill in the gap that was left when the, the assessment was no longer paid. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those really centered around uh, energy. Uh, so we're the state's only nonprofit uh, energy supplier, uh, and we're serving uh, dozens of communities and businesses throughout the area. Uh, we also got involved in uh, helping foster the local uh, solar facilities through the sale of SRECs and net metering credits. Uh, and we've also been at the forefront of helping with alternative heating and cooling technologies, air source heat pumps, uh, biofuel systems, et cetera. Uh, and so those are really the, the profit generating arms of the organization. Then you have the community support 
arms of the organization. The RSVP program, which helps uh, uh, set up volunteers over 55 with over 45 nonprofits in the area. We have the Tobacco Free Community Partnership, which works, works with schools uh, to help kids understand uh, the dangers of uh, tobacco smoke. We have a purchasing cooperative that has between eight and $10 million worth of purchasing going through it uh, to bring bulk savings to schools and towns throughout uh, the area. So those are where the organization kind of found its success. And what about, uh, is there retirements and uh, health insurance for county employees involved in this situation as well? So those those fees are really the the obligations and, and, and the, the financial weight that is bringing the organization down. Um, so paying for the OPEB obligation for the 64 retirees that once worked for the county hospital, Hampshire Care, uh, paying for the uh, the, the retirement obligation for the same, those costs are, are what the, the financial obligation of the organization is. I guess my next question would be, what happens next in terms of these entities, these programs, these costs that you mentioned? Um, will they be sustainable under uh, a different umbrella? Well, will they continue in terms of service and, and employees? Well. Okay. The, the costs uh, for those retirement benefits and health care benefits for retirees, that's what we're trying. The reason we're uh, looking for a buyer for the courthouse, the reason that we're trying to monetize some of these energy businesses that we've created is to actually create a trust fund that will actually fund those liabilities f for their lifetime. Um, so we're trying to do th that's where the costs are going. Uh, w for the other programs that Todd just mentioned, uh, the RSVP program, mm -hmm. Tobacco Free, those things, we're looking for other agencies uh, within the region to take on those programs, and uh, we're working very hard that they will take on the employees as well so that we can uh, take care of the people who've been doing this work, been doing it well for such a long time. When you weigh the balance sheet, when you talk about assets and liabilities, uh, can you give us some numbers as to what, what those figures involve? Uh, sure. I mean, the the liabilities for the retirement and OPEB, which is other post-employment benefits, largely health care, the, the number for that, the present value, if you had this money in the bank, you could pay these bills forever, uh, is roughly $4.7 million. Mm -hmm. um, we believe it's going to take another 800000 or so to wrap up the organization, to pay other obligations, pay legal fees, and things like that. So the organization needs to monetize about five and a half million dollars. And um, we believe we have more assets than that uh, with the courthouse. So. And let's talk a little bit about the courthouse, certainly an iconic structure in downtown Northampton. Uh, what would you like to see happen with that? What would be the best case scenario for the Council of Governments with regard to that courthouse? To sell it to the state, for example, or, uh, you know, what, what your hope there? I think at this point the, the best case scenario is to sell it for the state for close to its value in order to set up that trust fund to pay for those uh, obligations. And that building is iconic, uh, not only for Northampton, but for the region. Uh, it's one of the only other open spaces uh, in the city, very active lawn uh, that we've made available to the community for a number of events and services. Um, so for me, uh, it's important that that building remain in public use. Uh, that it be restored to its full potential, and that the space around it continue to be open to the community to be used uh, for those uh, events like the Cancer uh, Connection Camp Out, for the summer concert series, and that type of thing. Is the state the best option now for uh, for that building? In my opinion, yes. Yeah. I, the, the, the building really does need to be put to public use. I mean, there's a very old deed. It's handwritten from 1767, and it, it basically states that if it doesn't go to public use, it probably would go back to the city. And uh, so the idea of turning it into condos or something like that isn't on anybody's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the state uh, is certainly the best option, and I think D.A. Sullivan, when we were meeting with him today, did a really masterful job of describing an idea of what a use by the trial court and juvenile court and other systems could be to make it a public space, a welcoming public space right in the middle of downtown. And I know you've been in contact with uh, your local legislative representatives. Can you talk about the tie-in with uh, the legislature and or uh, your legislators in terms of getting their help uh, to try to get the situation resolved from your standpoint? We, we uh, 
at the end of the calendar year, right before the legislators turned over, Representative Steve Kulik facilitated a meeting uh, with the legislators to kind of talk to them about what's going to happen next. And so since then, uh, Senator Joe Comerford's office has been uh, kind of the point and uh, coordinating with the entire delegation, including the major ones, uh, Dan Carey in East Hampton and Lindsay Sabadosa in Northampton on, and Natalie Blay on the House side uh, and the other senators, Adam Hines, and even the ones that only have a piece. Uh, and uh, so the whole delegation's been involved, and frankly, they've been very, very helpful because ultimately this will be a legislative solution.